title of my lesson this morning is called The Animal Kingdom. Animal Kingdom. <laughs> uh, turn, turn to Proverbs chapter 30. I don't know about you guys, but I absolutely love nature. I love watching nature shows. I like watching the BBC, the, the Discovery Channel, all these things where you can watch these lions attacking animals and stuff like that. Like the, the, the herd of wolves or a pack of wolves out there doing their thing. Uh, so much can be learned from all the incredible things that God has created in nature. There's a ton of wisdom to be had. A lot that, a lot that we can learn from God's creation. And in Proverbs chapter 30, uh, in verse 7, the Bible says, Two things I ask of you, O Lord. Do not refuse me before I die. Keep falsehood and lies far from me. Keep me neither, uh, give me neither poverty nor riches, but give me only my daily bread. Otherwise, I may have too much and disown you. And say, who is the Lord? Or I may become poor and steal, and so dishonor the name of my God. So it's kind of interesting um, that that human nature can kind of take this toll. We can, we can recognize this in our own lives and in the lives of people around us, right? To where if you have so much and life's going so great and it's so awesome, you start to say, I don't, I don't really need God in my life. I, I, I took care of myself. I worked hard and, and, I've, and I got this reward. My bank account's great. I got my new car, my new house, whatever it may be. I got a great career. I don't really need God. I don't know I have time for God in my life, right? And then on the other side of that coin, if our life is too much of a struggle, we might have this tendency uh, to, do, uh, to do bad so that we can get comfortable and we can maybe even steal and be dishonest to try to get us to a place of comfort. And so the, the proverb here teaches us something incredible. It says that, hey, if, I, if God just gives me what I need, just provides for me, that's got to be enough for me. That's going to help me to be content. And I think that relating to the animal kingdom, uh, animals are kind of like that in the wild too. They just take whatever they want and do whatever they want, they seem. But there's some cool creatures that we're going to go across during the next Proverbs here, and we can learn some wisdom from these animals to help us live in this happy medium of our life of just being content with what we have and, and, not, and, and work for the right things and in the right way. And we can build God's kingdom and not just a personal empire. Amen? Sound good? Verse 24 says, Four things on earth are small, yet that they are extremely wise. And so we're going to have a little bit of a zoology class here and, and, and a Bible class at the same time. We just get some wisdom from these animals here. Point number one, hardworking ants. The Bible says in verse 25, ants are creatures of little strength, yet they store up their food in the summer. See, an ant here alone is small and weak, right? Just all by itself. You can imagine an ant walking on the floor with these crazy giants stomping all, over, all around it, right? And they're small and weak by themselves. But it says that they're wise enough to know that there is strength in numbers. And that's why you don't ever see solitary ants. There's always a pile of them whenever you see ants, right? They have that strength in the numbers and they do take care of and work hard and store up food and they take care of each other, much like disciples do. Ants can be found on every continent, except, you guessed it, Antarctica. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Fun facts. <laughs> Isn't that odd? Isn't that so odd? <laughs> Check this out. We have a church on every continent, except Antarctica. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. <laughs> But who wants to go on a mission to Antarctica? <laughs> Evangelize the penguins. <laughs> Check this out. More fun facts about ants. Okay? You guys want some more fun facts about ants? Most ants can survive underwater for about 24 hours, which is pretty incredible. Disciples, of course, were fond of baptizing people, and you'll never find us too far from some water. Amen? <laughs> All the ants in the world weigh as much as all the humans in the world. That's how many ants are out there. There's a lot of ants out there. Jesus as well took the weight of all the sin of all the humans onto his shoulders, which is awesome. Check this out. The largest ant colony ever found was 3,750 miles long. So ants get around, amen? They get around. 
Of course, the disciples are called to evangelize the world in the generation, yes. right? And we get around the world. Now, check this out. Ants are the longest living of all insects. They live sometimes to 30 years, which is a generation, approximately 30 years. <laughs> Ants move an estimated 50 tons of soil per year in one square mile. Disciples can move mountains with the faith of a mustard seed. Fire ants cause a lot of damage. We know all about, if anybody does any yard work around here in Hilo, you know all about fire ants, right? They cause around $5 billion worth of damage a year in North America. That's how destructive they are. Check this out. Porn industry is worth over $4 billion a year. That's how much is made in the porn industry. With enough disciples, we could destroy the porn industry. We could combat that and beat it and destroy it. If we have enough disciples. Are you willing to work hard to destroy the porn industry? Or are you secretly supporting the porn industry? Ooh, that's a tough one. Some ant species are asexual. They actually clone themselves and do not require any males. So singles, you don't really need a spouse. It's not, it's not something you need, but high five to all my married friends, or high five, because it's pretty awesome to have a spouse. <laughs> but disciples do clone themselves. Disciples make disciples. So in that way, we're like ants as well. <laughs> <clears throat> ants and humans are the only creatures that farm other creatures. You don't realize this, so there's a, ant, there's a specific type of ant called the sugar ant. It'll actually go and collect aphids, other bugs, and they'll put them up on trees. And the aphids will suck the nutrient from the leaves, and then they'll poop out sugar, which the sugar ants love. So they actually farm these guys. They bring them up there and they colonize a leaf with aphids and they'll sit over there I've seen them do this I, I didn't believe it at first I was like I need to check this out so I grabbed my magnifying glass and I checked it out and that's what they were doing the ant will literally sit behind the aphid and tickle it until it mess with it and to keep it active and eating and it'll poop sugar and then this ant gets fired up about it kind of kind of crazy <laughs> yeah, talk about it talk about a serious sugar craving to do something like that <laughs> Our plan to evangelize the world, in a sense, is based on farming each other, in a way, right? Not that we're slaving each other out or anything like that, but we do have Bible talks within our churches that are meant to grow. And our, church, and our Bible talks are meant to send out missionaries to plant other churches. In a sense, we're helping each other to evangelize the world. Amen. Ants have two stomachs, if you didn't know this. They must be pretty small, but they do. They have one stomach for themselves and one stomach to share with each other. Pretty neat. They share, they take care of each other. And that's the cool thing about ants is they actually, in their common, they actually provide for and take care of each other, just like disciples do. Some ants have no eyes and they live in darkness all the time. And of course, we know that if we have sin in our lives, we refuse to repent from. The Bible says we're living in darkness too, so we don't want to be that kind of ant, right? The ants, they live in these communities and they work together as a unit and they survive through planning and through labor and hard work. And they're the opposite of what the Bible would call the sluggard or the slothful man. They are very, very industrious. And so are disciples called to be as well. And they are called to have a servant's heart as disciples. We take care of each other. I do want to lift up a couple of people that are hardworking ants that, that really take care of our fellowship. Uh, Cameron, where's Cameron? There he is. Sitting back. Cameron is a hardworking ant. <laughs> Cameron, uh, he got into a car accident and gave us all a big scare. Praise the Lord that, that God spared him serious injury. Uh, but it was a bit of a scare there in the beginning. But even after he got into his car accident, he had promised the sister, I think it was Jordan, that he was going to bring her some coffee. So he's actually texting people from the ambulance to bring her the coffee he promised bring her while he was injured. Uh, 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 Cameron is here early in the morning, every morning, and setting up. He's, like, he's the one that sets this oversees the setting up this him and Robbie oversee the setup of this place and this awesome thing that we have he also teaches other guys to do his job for him in case he gets into another car accident and take, make it, and we don't miss a beat around here but that's how awesome Cameron is at taking care of this church another couple that's awesome are the graces uh, they had a they had a rough couple of months with some illnesses and some traveling 
And even though while they were gone, they still didn't miss their contribution. They still want to take care of the fellowship. Alira is another sister I want to lift up as well. She went home to Palau to visit, to stay with her family during the summer break. She came back and made up all the contribution that she missed because she takes care of her family. Great example in a fellowship of hardworking ants. Luke chapter 10 in verse 1. You turn there. The Bible said, After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. He told them, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into the harvest field. So here we have Jesus sending people out to do good works that God has pre prepared in advance for them to do. Out into the harvest field to help other people become Christians. So we, as disciples today, we are God's worker ants. And we're sent out into the world to work in his field. To share our faith, to spread the gospel message of salvation to the lost. And like the ant, there is strength in numbers. We need each other to do it. We need to go with each other to do these things. Or we won't be effective in accomplishing this great task. Together, we can work hard to reap a harvest for God. Satan, of course, we know is trying to wipe humanity out and eradicate and exterminate all of us disciples. That's what he wants to do. So we have got to work hard to combat that. Challenge be a hard working ant in the harvest field of the Lord. Point number two, the power of the coney. This is an interesting creature. I had to look it up. I've never heard of it. It says that they have little power and that they make their home in these crags. So I studied it out. What are they? It's actually uh, from Hebrew translated to a rock badger. So it's interesting. They look kind of like a guinea pig and you guys might be Googling up, them up right now, possibly. <laughs> but what is this creature, right? It's a little mammal, and it looks like, like I said, it looks like a guinea pig, kind of. But it's actually related closely to an elephant, of all things. I don't know. That's what Google told me. It must be true. So their, their habitat <laughs> their habitat is in the landscape with rock crevices, and they use this to escape from predators. They don't have any claws or teeth or venom to protect them, but they do have a large male protector that stands watch, kind of as a sentry, while the others go out foraging in groups. So he kind of warns them uh, when the prey is, uh, the predators are coming and they go hide in the rocks, right? So check this out. They're preyed upon by leopards, uh, cobras, adders, pythons, wild dogs, wolves, hawks, even owls and eagles go after these things. So like literally everything is these guys' enemy, <laughs> but somehow they survive in this harsh environment. What makes them so powerful and so successful? Well, the power is found in their wisdom. Right? Their system of sentries and their refuge in the rocks. Check this out in Ezekiel chapter 33. You don't have to turn there. It says in verse 7 Son of man, I have made you a watchman for the people of Israel. So hear the word I speak and give them warning from me. So, of course, God ultimately is our large male protector. That's who he is. That's who he is, but he does have us be watchmen for each other as well. As disciples, we do need to have watch out for each other, right? Are you being that watchman for your brothers and sisters around you? Warning them about danger. What kind of danger is out there for the brothers and sisters? Literally everything is preying upon disciples, trust me. <laughs> so if someone seems to be in sin, we need to bring it up and not just let somebody else handle it. We need to be that watchman to warn each other. Turn to Psalm chapter 61. <laughs> Verse 2, the Bible says, From the ends of the earth I call to you. I call as my heart grows faint. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For you have been my refuge, a strong tower against the foe. Uh oh, my page got mixed up here. Our own sense of weakness.
should drive us to take refuge in a rock that's higher than us, right? Of course, Jesus. And we have to understand that without Jesus, we truly are powerless. We need to be close to Jesus to be safe from these predators that are going around us. We talked about it in our, uh, our class last night for the uh, singles devotional. We did a Bible study on our predator, the Satan who comes after us. He's a real foe. He's not some little pointy-tailed little creature that's cruising in hell with a pitchfork waiting to torture bad people that didn't listen to their mommy and daddy or something like that. No, he's down here on earth and he's roaring lion looking to devour us. He's a real foe. He's, he's as real as it gets. And he's after disciples more than anything else. And the only protection we can truly have is to be close to Jesus. And it's so important. I, I want to put forth a challenge. I know I did give the one a day challenge for the past few weeks. right? Uh, have one great quiet time a day. Uh, reach out to one of your brothers and sisters every single day. Uh, meet a new person and invite them to Bible study or church at, at least one time a day. right? I want to add that to the quiet time challenge. I want to I challenge all of us. So whatever you've been reading, if you're reading a certain book or you have a series you're reading or whatever it may be, add some Jesus' teachings in there. Make sure you're reading something about Jesus from the Gospels because he is that rock that we have to stay close to. I think Satan has been taking people out of this, uh, out, taking people out. He's been taking people out for thousands of years and he's come after our church hard this year. We had a rough year with, with Satan coming after people. Yeah. We just need to be close to Jesus. Right? And when we're close to Jesus, we won't have time to beef with each other. We won't have time to get tempted by the world. When we're close to, when we're close to that rock, in that refuge, nothing's going to take us out. We're going to be just fine. So no scrapping with each other. Be close to Jesus. Let's be like that coney, watching out for each other and finding shelter in Jesus' rock. Amen. Point number three, marching with the horde. Verse 27. Locusts have no king. Yet they advance together in ranks. Locusts are an interesting creature. They're normally solitary and they actively avoid contact with each other. But when the conditions get just right, particularly after lots of rain, contact becomes unavoidable. They start like, gathering together and they form these huge hordes of insects. And they bump and scrape against one another and they begin to change and they become different. In an hour or so, they, they start to create a big giant swarm and they actually change into like a different creature. They're no, they look like boring and brown and dull and then all of a sudden as, they, as the serotonin levels increase, these normally shy and solitary insects, they actually become social and crave more contact with each other and they actually start turning into a different looking creature. They're bold and yellow and green rather than that neutral brown. And so these two phases, they look so different that until the 1920s, scientists thought they were completely different creatures, but they weren't, it was the same thing. They just metamorphosize, if that's even a word. Yeah. It probably is. <laughs> Don't check Google. <laughs> so the adult lo locusts, they can actually fly and the little guys are called hoppers and they bounce together but they come together and they hoard up against each other and they go around the world uh, they can travel as much as a hundred miles in one day in 1954 a swarm of locusts flew from Africa all the way to Great Britain decimating all the crops in their path back in uh, 1988 a, a swarm made it across from Africa all the way to the Caribbean somehow they made it even across the, the oceans Kind of like us, right, disciples? After baptism, we become a different creature. But we're what we're supposed to, right? We're not supposed to be solitary, lonely creatures that are, are dull and boring. We're supposed to be exciting and vibrant and fired up and craving contact with each other. And then we go out like an army for God, destroying not other people, not wiping out countries, but wiping out sin from the earth. That's what we do in the Lord's army, a great army. The, the prophet Joel used some really cool poetic writing to describe, spiritually speaking, what the Lord's army looks like. In verse 5 it says, With a noise like that of chariots, they leap over the mountaintops, like a crackling fire, consuming stubble, like a mighty army drawn up for battle. At the sight of them, nations are in anguish. Every face turns pale. They charge like warriors. They scale walls like soldiers. They all march in line, not swerving. From their course. They do not jostle each other. Each marches straight ahead 
They plunge through defenses without breaking ranks. They rush upon the city. They run along the wall. They climb into the houses like thieves. They enter through the windows. Before them, the earth shakes. The heavens tremble. The sun and moon are darkened, and the stars no longer shine. The Lord thunders at the head of his army. His voices are beyond number. And mighty is the army that obeys his command. The day of the Lord is great. It is dreadful. Who can endure it? You might look around and go, wow, we don't seem like a dreadful army that's going to destroy everything in our path. You might say, I was just a little church, a neighborhood church here in the middle of Hilo, the middle of the Pacific Ocean, and we're not that great. You're wrong. You are that great. Open your spiritual eyes and see the, the gigantic army of thousands upon thousands of angels marching with us to victory for God. See, there's so much sin in the world that needs to be conquered. All you have to do is turn on the news. And I can say it Sunday after Sunday. It's bad out there. There's so much wickedness and sin in the world. Even in our own neighborhood, there's sadness. There's despair. There's loneliness. And there's bitterness. And there's depression. There's anxiety. And there's fear. There's addiction. And there's abuse all around us. But we are a part of an army that can completely decimate all of that for God. Completely wipe it all out. You know, the uh, locusts don't actually have a leader, but they know exactly what to do. For us as disciples in our church, we don't have a king of this church. We don't have that kind of leader for this church at all. Jesus is our king. He's up in heaven. He's not physically here with us walking as a man anymore. But he is indeed with us. And we know exactly what we need to do to defeat sin in this world. And we can do it. And we are doing it. Not only here in Hilo. Not only in Kona. Not only in Honolulu. But just the entire world. Next weekend, the army is going to get together from all over the world in the GLC. And I'm so proud of everybody that could make it. And for everybody staying behind that helped out, people that are going, I really appreciate each and every one of you. We were able to raise some money to help a sister that had a, an emergency with her family. We were able to raise some money to get her to go because she really wanted to go. And she told me to tell them marriage that helped out. Thank you so much. We really appreciate you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I, I want to I challenge and encourage the church to please pray for all of us that are traveling. Uh, pray for all the speakers at the GOC and all the other disciples there. Uh, yes, there's still COVID going on around there. And so we want to be, be safe and come back nice and healthy and get fired up to advance to God's army when we get home. But please pray for all of us while we're traveling. I, I personally, like I'm going to be open with you guys. I don't like traveling. I hate traveling. I want to stay right here in Hilo. This is where I want to be. I don't want to go no place else. I don't want to visit any place else. But I know it's good for me. And I know it's good for us. So I'm fired up to go. I'm not having regrets about going. I just don't like it. <laughs> but I'll do what I got to do. I know, I'll do what I know what's right. I'll, get, I'll, 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 tell you, I'll, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll get my heart right about it on Tuesday, okay? All right. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm, I'm fired up to go. I'm really looking forward to seeing everybody. Uh, point number four, the boldness of a gecko. Yes. Where is he? You have geckos in the Bible? Sort of. <laughs> we, got them, we got them here, that's for sure. <clears throat> a lizard can be caught with the hand, yet it is found in king's palaces. It's lizards, like disciples, they're highly adaptable creatures, and you can find them everywhere. Some lizards can change color to suit their environment, or depending on their physiological or psychological state. I didn't know lizards had psychological states. But this is what they're saying here. Another Google thing. Paul, though, he was like a gecko. 1 Corinthians 9, verse 19. You're going to turn there. The Bible says, Though I am free, I belong to no man. I make myself a slave to everyone to win as many as possible. To the weak, I become weak. To win the week. I have become all things to all men. So that by all possible means I might save some. I love Paul's heart here. He says I'll do whatever it takes to relate to people around me. If you're, if you're weak where you're at, I'll come be weak with you. If you're strong where you're at, I'll come be strong with you. If you're, if you're having a hard time in your life, I'll have a hard time with you. He says, I, want, I just want to win some people over. Yeah. I just want to help people to know Jesus, to have a relationship with him, and to make it to heaven. Uh -huh. He's willing to do anything and go anywhere to make it happen. Right. Uh -huh. 
There's even a lizard called a basiliscus lizard. I don't know, I might not be pronouncing that right, but it's also known as, check this out, the Jesus lizard. Why do they call it the Jesus lizard? Lizard, this thing can walk on water. Pretty cool. Check this one out. There's a horned lizard that actually shoots blood from its eyes. When a predator attacks it, it constricts the, the muscles in its eyes, in its head, and it pops up blood vessels in the corner and it can shoot blood four feet to like hit a predator. It shoots blood from its eyes. Now, what does that have to do with what we do? <laughs> Nothing at all. I just thought it would be cool to share it with you guys. I, like, I really thought it through. I'm like, how can I relate this to disciples? <laughs> nothing. <laughs> I got nothing. So please don't shoot blood out of your eyes at each other. Not now, not ever. That's just creepy and unsanitary as well. <laughs> the proverb does say that this lowly creature can be found in the castle of a king. And you can catch them with your hand. And we've got these lizards in our house, these, these geckos. They're everywhere. They're, like, they're all over my house. And you can imagine being a lizard in a house with the humans. And sometimes these humans have pet cats that stalk them and bite their heads off and leave them lying around. And yet they still hang out. They're not afraid of anything. They could care less. My, the geckos in my house, they could care less if I'm there. They're like looking at me like, what are you doing here? I'm like, get out. And like, no, no, no. I was here first. You're just renting. <laughs> you know? Those lizards are bold. Like they don't care about me or anything else. <laughs> My son, he like crushed one in the in the sliding door and put it in his mouth. And his buddies didn't even leave. Like if I saw something like that happen to one of my friends, I'd split out of that house. <laughs> the lizards didn't get the they, they, like I'm not gonna stay here. This is our house. Like I said, you get off my porch. You know. <laughs> For us as disciples, we need to be bold like that. Right? So, like, sometimes we can get insecure when we're out reaching out to people or sharing our faith. Like, I, I don't know if I want to share my faith with my boss who has power over me and control over me and, and he controls my hours and my paycheck. I don't want to weird my boss out about sharing my faith, right? I, I'm, I'm afraid and intimidated by my boss. And I'll just share with my lowly co workers. No, 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 no. We need to share with everybody. Yeah. We need to boldly go into any situation. A disciple of Jesus belongs there. A disciple of Jesus, wherever you're at, you own that place. That's your house that you're there in. People are intruding on your space and you need to share with Jesus about them. We can't be intimidated by people. Yes, we need to reach out to the lowly people that are on the streets and they're addicted and they're homeless and stuff like that. Absolutely not neglect them. But we also have to reach out to our bosses, to business owners, to the wealthy. We need people that have a character and have the funds and means and finances to really help us advance the gospel. We need to reach out to all people at all times. I love the boldness of Alex. He's like a gecko sitting over here with his nice red shirt on. <laughs> but he's bold. He'll go up to anybody and share their, his faith with them. He's a bold like a gecko. So my challenge for us all is as we're going after our one-a-day challenge, just keep at it. Right? Uh, the, a bunch of us are leaving to the conference next week, and we will be back. And then we're going to have a crank and bring your neighbor day. So let's really go after sharing our faith with boldness. And let's blow it out. The campus is starting. And we can have, we can have a ton of people sh show up. Like the COVID is kind of diminishing around here. It's not a big of a scare these days. So people want to get together to do something like Iron Chef. Like that's going to fire people up in the community. That's going to bring people together. And it's going to be amazing. So let's really go after it. Just like a bold gecko, you own the place you're in. Amen? In closing. There's a lot of neat and fun facts we can learn about God's animal kingdom. And we are, in a sense, we're kind of like animals ourselves. Technically, we are. <laughs> but we are in an animal kingdom as well. Amen? Amen? I want us to all imitate the wisdom of an ant and work hard for the Lord and for the survival of the human race. I want us to be like a coney. Watch out for your brothers and sisters and stay close to Jesus, the rock. Let's learn from the example of the locust and conquer sin in the world as we march unstoppably heavenward. Look to the gecko and his boldness, not caring what anyone thinks about you, being unashamed to share the good news about Jesus to everyone. So many lessons we could be learning from God's creatures. I want us to challenge us to go out into our week this week. Look around in nature. Enjoy God's creation. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. And we can learn so much from it. And we can put that to practice in our lives. Let's enjoy our Christian walk with each other. I love you guys all. Aloha.